Hello everyone and welcome to another exhibition match. This time it is going to be a match between... Oh, whoops. That is not... Yeah, I think it is. Alright, this time it's going to be a match between Made Honestly and Google Frog. Made Honestly going for Cloakbot Factory and Google Frog going for the Spiderbot Factory. We are in Anvilwood. A map where I haven't seen spiders, actually. I suppose that's not surprising. There aren't a lot of cliffs. Not that spiders technically require cliffs, but they benefit a lot from cliffs. This map doesn't really have cliffs. I mean, it has... Yes, it does have a cliff, but it is a spider-proof cliff. What with the water in the way. It's a technique that I think originated with Bandit Plains. Which then, of course, was ported for Trojan Hills, which essentially was the small version of Bandit Plains. I think that's the history. It could be the other way around, but those are the first maps I saw with that, and then that just got carried over to other maps, because it's a good idea. It's a great way to... Make sure that there are certain areas in the map that are truly inaccessible to anyone. It's like, no, these are these are not places you can go. Doesn't matter what factory you use. And then you have other cliffs where they are places you can go if you're using spiders or well, okay, this is jump. This is jumpable. But not spider climbable. Google Frog doing the typical flea thing going in the back. May honestly doing the typical glaive thing with the you know, three glaives up front trying to find what they can find. Five glaives. Ooh, made honestly being very aggressive. Five glaives early on before the first Conjurer. They want to get a few good kills. I mean, if they can get rid of this Weaver, they might have a chance. This, I... Which version is... Okay, this is the later Venom. Stronger but less paralysis Venom. So these, like I said, these are slightly older replays. I don't remember exactly what version we were on. One, one, okay, 1.8.11.2, that's fine. The last replay, I think, was 1.8.10.0, which is quite old. But yeah, 1.8.11, Venom's... They got tweaked, so they're much more of a frontline combat unit. Bit less of the stunning. Still have a lot of stunning, but not three seconds every time you get hit by one of their lightning bolts. Not that that makes them any less deadlier to the glaives. In fact, it makes them slightly deadlier because now the glaives die in four hits. Not including splash damage. So for now, made honestly in a bit of a tight spot. I would, I'm, I'm gonna just throw out a hazard and guess. I'm gonna go for running. Nope, they're going for more glaives. I don't know why, because Venom's pretty well hard counter glaives. Even in numbers, unless you position them perfectly around the Venom, so as to avoid the splash damage hitting all of them, I don't think the Venoms are gonna go down. But that is exactly what Made Honestly is going to try from the looks of it. Spreading out their glaives. They got everything laid out. So it is... Ooh. Actually, there it is. There it goes. Enough glaives spread out well enough. That's exactly what I was talking about. Made Honestly. Okay. Thinking on the same wavelength. Unfortunately, this is where that becomes a bit of a problem. And... I have done this myself. That's why I brought it up, because it's kind of the approach I tend to take. Just like, oh, how can I outplay my opponent with theoretically worse units? It's like, yeah, no, that's a that's an okay idea if you happen to have those units already in play, but Made Honestly is building them for the express purpose of fighting Venoms. Like, they're going for the express purpose of fighting an uphill battle, and like, yeah, they are taking out the Venoms, but at... Okay, not so, so great cost in this case. But they lost a lot of glaives in the process. Like, Google Frog won on attrition that entire time. And the reclaim is not clearly in Made Honestly's favor. This is not a strong position to be in. Where the heck is... Why can't I see it with, Constru with the Caretaker? Weird. Anyway. Yeah, the, the closest reclaim is this pile of about 300 metal that isn't really in Made Honestly's control. Arguably, it's in Google Frog's control, though I don't think they're going to send any Weavers there for the time being. At any rate, Man honestly did manage to get through here with the Glaives. The Venom coming around the side, I... I, I don't know. I Knight? Actually, I, I do know now. I was going to say, I don't know. The Venom's going to work. Yeah, the Venom's going to absolutely work. That was real demonstration of the new Venom power. That probably is what Google Frog was trying to do this match. Same time going into the commander. Oh my goodness! They take out the commander too! Almost missed that! I mean, granted, that was what? 
two, uh, nearly two dozen glaives coming in there, but they do manage to take out the commander regardless. Google Frog losing a huge amount of positioning in the center of the map. They did manage to get the geothermal plant up though. So it's you now kind of it's kind of a mixed bag. Same time the Venom's going around the back, able to take out more glaives, but this is going to be reclaimed and made honestly's territory, one way or the other. And the Venom does go down, few glaives lost. But at the same time, that was for Google Frog's commander, made honestly able to turn that into quite the economic advantage. Granted, Google Frog has full control over this reclaim field, so yeah. 1600 metal reclaim. I mean, part of that is rocks. But still, the commander and everything else, that is all Google Frog's territory. That being said, Man Honestly has managed to take control over that old reclaim field from two minutes ago. Look, Zero is a fast game. <laughs> and yeah, that's the thing. It's. That's the. Like, you know, the, Man Honestly is definitely pushing into the economy they found, and they are going heavy on the glaives. I mean, I gotta say, I'm kind of impressed. It's not... Like, most of that attrition damage is the fact that the commander died. Like, I'm almost impressed just by the audacity more than anything else. Like, the fact that we aren't seeing a switch to Ronin, which normally is what you would do. You'd switch to Ronin in order to fight the Venoms, and then the Spider Player would probably switch over into Recluse, and now you're pl playing a bit of a micro game or a tactics positioning game regarding, you know, how the units are set up, and no, in this case, it's just the Glaives positioning around everything else. Unfortunately, can't get to the Geo Plant, but that's what Terraform is for, so well done, Google Frog. But yeah, the Maid honestly is going by sheer numbers and positioning, trying to avoid getting too many Glaives caught in Splash. Well, easier said than done. But hey, they have... They still have that Glaive raiding party going around the map, doing a lot of damage, taking care of a few Venoms, or Glaive, sorry, Venoms. Yes, I do mean Venoms. I completely lost my brain. Getting rid of a few Venoms here and there, just taking them out as they find them. I mean, granted, again, at great cost, but it's working. And now there's the Ronin switch. Okay. I, I, I noticed in the mini-map, I was like, wait a sec, those aren't slings. That's that's a line in a circle. That's That is a Ronin. A horizontal bar in a circle is a Ronin. So, inevitably, the Ronin switch, there it is. But I gotta be honest, Maid honestly managed to pull off quite a bit with the Glaives. I expect, though, a lot of the way this match proceeded was because Google Frog... Like, Venom, before this match happened, was very recently buffed. Or, I should say, very recently tweaked. It was kind of... It was nerfed and buffed at the same time. It was a bit anti-quant, but honestly, the Venom was... It kind of needed it. So, the... Before the Venom would stun for, like, three seconds and deal pittance of damage, like, 40 damage a pop. It was enough to kill fleas, so they wouldn't be completely killed by fleas. But it basically was useless for anything else. It was a huge attrition thing. But now Venoms are, yeah, 70 and 450. So they got the damage doubled, but they can only stun for one second. So they're still useful for stunning. They're just not able to completely lock down an army. Like, two Venoms will not lock down an army forever. And I think Google Frog is testing how far Venoms can go. Like, not to take away from Maid Honestly here, they have played this game remarkably well, considering. It's just that I think if Google Frog wasn't trying to test the limits of Venom, we would have seen more Redbacks earlier on, and that would have completely shut down the Glaives. I think the fact that we're seeing pure Venom is more to do with the fact that Google Frog is testing them in this match than anything else. And as far as can be told, like, the Venom role is... It's a little... Like, Venom seem to be a little more reliable in what they can do. Like, the one second stun is enough to still do significant damage to Glaives without totally locking down the army. And so it's not completely uninteractive. And the amount of damage dealt is a significant threat. So it's a, it's an interesting trade-off that seems to work out for Glaives. I mean, Maid honestly decided to still push through with heavy Glaive investment. But, you know, unless there was, you know, a dozen Glaives into two Venoms or at most, it was suicide. And now it's like, we're seeing the Ronin switch. That, that is making all the difference. Like, once the Ronin switch happens, of course, that's, that is where Spider tends to have some trouble. You need to get to the Recluses, and the Venoms really struggle. 
Although, it looks like the Venoms actually aren't doing too badly, all things considered. Yeah, they're having a bit of a hard time with the Ronin, but it's not not It's not nothing. Like, it, it's a counter, but it doesn't seem to be as hard to counter it. I have to double-check the patch notes. I don't think their speed got increased, but it may have been. I think it was just their damage was increased at the cost of their ability to stun for long periods of time. Like, their maximum stun duration was reduced. Yeah, I've... I find... I'm liking this. This is an interesting approach to Venom. But like I said, I expect that a lot of the reason why we were seeing so many Venoms early game and not Venom Redback... Well, okay, that's what I would do. Actually, Venom Redback isn't totally uncommon. But I think the reason we saw a mass Venom as opposed to a mixed force of some kind is because Venom was recently tweaked, and I'm pretty sure Google Frog is trying to figure out how far they can go. Because that is one thing to bear in mind when you're face facing Google Frog outside of a tournament setting, is and even possibly inside of a tournament setting, is that Google Frog is a designer first. A lot of times they'll play games with slightly awkward unit compositions or focusing a little more on one unit over another or a factory that might be underused or just try to figure out what can this do like what are the limits of the current design and that's a great question to ask like that is that designer brain is an important part of being the person who's doing a lot of the balance decisions for the game it just means that when you're facing google frog you gotta bear in mind that they might be doing slightly weird things so just you know, it's going to be an interesting game when you're facing Google Frog. There, you know, you're never entirely sure what they're going to do. It does mean that sometimes you can get the drop on them because they're using an unfamiliar strategy, or they are testing the limits of a unit and they're flying too close to the sun, which I think is what happened in this game. Like there were just too many. I mean, granted, the game's not over yet, but Maid honestly has managed to rack up quite the body count, get a fair amount of reclaiming the territory, not a huge amount, but enough that it's it was significant, and at least transition into a mid-ish game strategy, or mid-ish game position that they can use to start taking out the recluses. And honestly, it built up a massive army. I mean, if you look at the army values, it's probably not really comparable. Yeah, there's it's it's pretty much a two-fold difference between the two. More glaives coming around. The, was that a Stardust being taken out by a bunch of glaives? Oh, no, it wasn't just glaives. Okay. <laughs> that could not have been a Stardust taken out by... Okay, could have been a Stardust taken out by Glaives. There's sort would have been probably two dozen Glaives coming in in the first place. But yeah, the thing is, basically... I don't know how much of this is made Honestly's play, which, again, playing Glaives into Venoms is... Well, it's a bold strategy, that's for sure. I mean, I can't say it didn't entirely work, but it wasn't the most efficient strategy. But at the same time, it seems clear to me that Google Frog was thinking more, how far can I go with the Venoms, rather than how can I win? Because the obvious choice to win would be just add in a few redbacks. Then it just completely wipes out like any hope the Glaze might have. At this point, though, slightly higher... Firepoint on the Phantoms, meaning they can take care of the Geo Plant. And that is, I think, it. Google Frog going for, looks like, one last hurrah over to the south side of the map. Small squad units, seeing what they can take out. That is forcing Maid, honestly, to, re to retreat briefly. But I don't see it buying a huge amount of time for Google Frog to turn this around. Like, their economy is considerably weaker. Their military is... Still weaker. I mean, the exact value... No, it's, it's still a two-fold difference. This is not going well for Google Frog. Like I said, they flew a bit too close to the sun when it came to Mass Venom. We're seeing now Venom Redback with some Reckless support. Granted, that's also because the Ronin are here, but that's where the Recluses come in, not the Redbacks. But yeah, Ma Venom Redback, that's more what you'd expect early on from Spiders, not pure Venom. But again, it's interesting to see the test of what pure Venom can do. Which is a significant amount, honestly. This, I, I should note for reference sake that pre, prior to this, if there was two Venoms, yeah, they could lock down a handful of Glaives. Like, four or five Glaives, if the Glaives are clumped up. 
But if any of those glaives escaped, the venoms were screwed because the venoms were like eight or eight or nine shotting glaives. And the problem with that is, you know, one glaive gets free and can take out a venom in a couple seconds, and then the other venom and the other glaives might get free because the venom starts alternating targets, and so it gets hit by ver by glaives alongside, and it's not really focus firing any one glaive because it's trying to stun them all because it's prioritizing the ones that are currently not stunned. And so it ends up, and even if you did focus fire and you still have a glaive that's killing you. It's not that much better if you focus fire it, honestly. So ultimately, one one unstunned glaive would slaughter the pack of venoms. And now, you know, one unstunned glaive isn't a big deal because the venoms aren't relying on keeping the glaives locked down. They're dealing enough damage that they, you know, two or three shot them. So you have two or three venoms come through and they're wiping out, you know, half a dozen glaives with the damage rather than picking away at glaives over the course of like 10 seconds so i would say this is overall a buff like it definitely puts venoms into a position where they're not the be all end all stun option for spiders uh, that's meant to be the widow that that is the intention that's part of the reason if i recall correctly from the patch notes why venoms were tweaked this way was to give the widow a bit more room to shine but honestly, it's a bit of a buff to the Venom in the early game. It's just that there are still limits, and the Redback is still the primary Riot unit for a reason. So with that, Google Frog throws in the towel, and Maid honestly takes the win. I mean, strong economy throughout, strong metal throughout. Just when was the exact point that the commander died? Okay, about a quarter of the way through. And that's about the point where Maid honestly started to get ahead. I mean, once the commander died... It, that's the thing in general with this game, that it's a little bit hard to communicate sometimes. The commander dying isn't going to end the game like in Supreme Commander or Total Annihilation or basically any other TA-based game. But losing the commander still is a massive loss in territory control. Like You just can't project the construction as well. You can't project the defensiveness as well. You can't reclaim as easily. So, losing the commander is still a massive momentum shift. And clearly made honestly took advantage of that. I mean, as I recall, he took advantage of that to push forward, start taking some of the reclaim fields that were from previous battles, and then from there, turn that into an economy that turned into an army that was twice Google Frog size and wiped them out. So yeah, I that was an interesting game. I do expect that that was partly because of Google Frog seeing how far they could go with Venoms, which was a very interesting test to watch. I'm glad I got to see it. And congratulations to Maid Honestly for beating Google Frog. Just do, like, don't feel bad if you don't beat them again, <laughs> because they are still a very strong player. They just are also, I, this felt like a designer brain game from them. This felt like a game of testing more than it was a game of playing to win. So, good on you for winning, though. Like, that was that was good. But in future, I would not recommend throwing glaives into Venom. Like, throw in a few Ronin, or just try to avoid the Venoms entirely. Venoms are slow. And especially on a map like this, where there aren't a lot of cliffs, there's not a lot of room for the Venoms to ambush the glaives. So, by and large, build some radar, spot the Venoms, work around them. And then build some Ronin to take on the Venoms directly. It's far more efficient than glaives. Glaives, glaives were not a good choice. You got, you kind of got lucky that redbacks weren't used. But glaives were a bad choice in that regard. They just happened to work because of sheer weight of numbers. And the fact that Google Frog didn't invest anything into redbacks and Venoms, while stronger against glaives, are still not the be-all end-all against glaives. They're not a be-all end-all unit. They're a support unit that happens to be able to hold its own in small engagements. And it's good that that was tested, so we can see that that is, is in fact the case. But that is in fact the case. So most of the players would have added a red back or two into the army, and that would have been kaput for all of the glaives. And even then, as it was, it was an inefficient trade. Like, the Venoms were winning those trades. In terms of cost and just in terms of map control. Anyway. That was that. So, the next and final match for today 
bit of a shorter map map set today, but well, to be honest, there's still tournament matches that I haven't published on YouTube yet, so there's, there's gonna be a lot of videos for the next week on YouTube. Yeah. Well, okay, Dime for everybody Cougar Frog donating their ranking to make sure balance works. I mean, I don't know that that's what they were doing. It just would be a thing Google Frog would do. Like, I wouldn't, I would not be surprised if Google Frog was doing that. I don't know that Google Frog was doing that. I didn't ask them if they were doing that. But if I asked them and they said they were doing that, I would completely buy that. It would make, it would be totally in character. Anyway, next match is going to be a bit of a bit more of a beginner match. It is going to be Do Rocket, who was actually in the tournament last week, versus Samuel Az. Az. Samuelaz. Samuelaz. Let's call Sam. And we're going to be on Fallendale, another new map for the tournament. So all these three maps are brand new maps. Well, okay, they're a month old now, but still very new maps, especially with 0k terms. They are quite new and quite interesting. And Fallendale is... Fallendale and Anvilwood, I think, are... I'm trying to remember if they're the better ones. I think so. I'm trying to remember, because there are some that are... I mean, they're built in various orders. Like, obviously, you don't build them all at once. But anyway, the point is, let's move on to the game. Next game, Fallendale. Pretty good map. Stay tuned. I am rambling. Oops.